Good morning, good afternoon, good night, whatever, um, good evening, if you, whatever time you're gonna view this video at, so. It's leadership, leadership month right here. Uh, I've been meaning to do this video for a long time, so I decided to just do it. Stole some time during my office hours, and I'm gonna do it now, you know? So, on the screen right now, y'all can't see me. I don't think that's important, because um, we're going directly into work. So on the screen right now is NASDAQ. One of my few analysis on it. So I'm gonna clear this analysis just so y'all don't get, get don't get confused or or uh, what is it here I've been on. So I'm just gonna make it like that. And my time frame right there is daily time frame at the moment. So what I'm gonna do with this video, I hope it's not too long. I'm gonna explain quite simple scenarios that you should obviously be aware of when you're dealing with indices. You know, um, what the market phase like uh, Nas. NAS 100, US 30, and SP 500, and anything that is a promising future of a buy, this is what you basically should be doing. So I'm going to show you a few things. It's quite straightforward. It's quite basic. So regardless of what happened in the past few years or the past few months, um, including the pandemic, I think the pandemic happened around about this phase. Just zoom into that. This is 2020 February. Is it February? March? Where was the pandemic? This is ten. Let me see. Yeah, so this has to be the pandemic. Yeah, this is the pandemic phase that took place, that drop right there. So I'm gonna excluding that part. So not 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 to mention what obviously how you actually recover from the pandemic. I'm gonna speak about the overall movement of Nasdaq and how obviously um, buy promising it is. So uh, as much as I'm gonna show how to sell, I'm I'm a big buyer because I believe in the future, and and the future of in the future of of this chart and the future of indices. Definitely, um, it's saying bye. Just like how people obviously underestimated Bitcoin in the past few years, and yeah, it kept being what it's it's doing, and we high till today. So getting into analysis, the daily time frame. I like I like the moment I'm going to daily time frame. I'm trying to see exactly where the market's moving. So I went to my daily time frame to have an idea of okay, so what's been happening for the past few months. I tell you with Nasdaq, we've just been going up. Honestly, uh, we drop whenever we can, whenever we get a chance to drop. But regardless. So we just go up as usual so i'm gonna show you one simple way to actually kill it one of the main understanding obviously we just come into our daily time frame right there and try to pick up your highs and lows don't be too hard on yourself you know simple highs use your horizontal line and wherever you can spot a high point just pick it out just like that you know just highlight it just like that just so you can have an understanding of where in the market obviously uh, uh major zones or major supports and resistance of the market that took place over the past year or for, over the past few months you know, um, you just close the door. Make sure this guy doesn't play music in here because I'm so sorry about that, guys. Um, so yeah, so all I'm doing is just highlighting our highs and lows on a daily time frame. I'm not gonna get too deep, I'm just gonna highlight, pick out the ones that I see, and uh, obviously, most of them in the past, even if the market might never go there. But for me to have a, a very strong and a concrete understanding of what's happening on the chart. I need to honestly go back into the past and understand what's been happening. So ever since the pandemic dropped, we've been recovering very strongly ever since. Um, honestly, even if you can't trade, just buy, man. Put enough on your account and buy. I'm just joking. Let me show you how to do it. But I'm just saying, most people don't really know how to trade. Most traders don't know how to trade because they know this chart is a buy chart. So they just come here and really think it's a low and they buy. But um, most importantly is to know what you're doing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start analyzing this chart right from... Uh, probably a few months back. I'm gonna highlight for exactly where I'm gonna start analyzing from. So I think I'll, I'll take the analysis from. Uh, let's take it from maybe last year, around about a year ago. So let's go from last year May. Last year May. So let's do that. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make that a bit thicker so it's visible. So I'm gonna analyze from this my blue vertical line going forward so that's gonna be what i'm gonna break down for you and show you guys how you would have killed it on how you should kill it you know i'm zooming a bit in and because obviously i want to highlight exactly where i put that vertical line there it is a vertical line i didn't go to school so i don't know yeah it is a vertical line it's not horizontal <laughs> so yeah um this is my breakdown obviously going a bit trying to zoom in and see if i can spot more stronger lows highs and lows on a daily time frame from where i've placed more into line uh, I see them, I see the highs and lows, which are these ones, obviously, so I'm going to try to move my lines right in place. Um, I see all of them. See that? I see that, I see, I see that low as well right there. You know, so 
But I want to go into a lot of time frame. So let me go into H4. So I'm here. I have a better picture of what I'm doing. Letting it load. So if you're going into H4, what happens is that you're going to be dealing with more candlesticks, more highs and lows, and obviously more challenges of um, more trade opportunities and more challenges in the market. So I'm back to my same phase where I've put, um, where I placed my vertical line. As you can see, the market, the chart looks a bit, bit different how it looked when I was in daily time frame. Reason being is because obviously on a daily time frame, you get one candlestick a day, and in four hours, we're literally getting about. Um, So with four hours we get around about um what one candlestick every four hours that would be for i don't know five to six a day i'm not too sure i'll calculate on that that's not important so right now what i want to do is now pick out the highs and lows on an h4 right i'm gonna use horizontal line but difference is i'm gonna use a different color so i said i'm gonna start my analysis from here so i'm gonna start right there you can see already the daily time frame did already i like this high from where i've of each side to start my analysis from. So if I put that there, it makes it two. So that makes it a bit confusing. So I'm gonna change my the, the color that I'm using. I'm gonna use um let's use let's use let's use is it red? Not red, still the same. Let's try yellow. Let's see yellow not yellow is not too good. Let's go with black. So yeah. So from where I've actually decided to analyze from going for show you guys how to actually kill it. Sorry about that. Um I see I pick up that high, even daily picks that high out, which means it's quite strong, so high. And then there's another low here. There's another low here. And then from this low, obviously the next high was literally around about this point. This high, that that high, or this high. They all happen around about the same area. So which is always which is why I always advise to say, okay, if you feel like you're chilling, it's a bit difficult for you to actually do that. To, to, to place too many highs and lows or too many lines it might get confusing just use your, your your obviously your your rectangle to actually your highlighter to actually just highlight the highs and lows so what i would have done here was just highlight that section just like that i'll show you so i highlight the low because that automatically that literally just highlights all the lows and highs that happen within that range so that like on this low for example we just do that so in that low we have about we had this low that came, the second low, and the third low. That shows a triple resistance. Ah, coffee. So, um, that, that that's a triple bottom if you guys know about that. And remember, this is um, this is a daily time frame. So daily, I mean, this is a one hour time frame. So, I mean, four hour time frame. Sorry about that. Four hour time frame. If the market has come down so many times on a four hour time frame, that initially just means, listen, it comes down this it came down the first time second time the third time that is obviously a triple bottom if you go down to lower time frames like your your one hour 30 minutes and, and 45 minutes you you realize that that is a strong triple bottom that actually took place on lower time frames that obviously gives us more confidence that the market is about to change direction and go up because it keeps resisting and obviously with the, with with nasdaq and us 30 this is definitely something very powerful because remember this is a buy chart this is a buy market it is it is a good time to actually get into the chart so if you feel like you're not too sure about that you let it go you let it ride as it, as it goes up remember that once the market is giving you a high it will come and give you a low and after obviously after it gives you a low it will definitely give you a high but in order for it to give you a high it has to come and pass the previous high point and then come back and rest right on that high so as you can see the market gave us a low the market pushed up from there it came in took a rest right there on the previous high we have highlighted and you can see what the market does here. It came back and took a rest. We took our buys obviously at that point. Once you bought the the market goes back, goes up, pushes up. If you don't close your profit, you can still hold comes back in the same same place, obviously, right there. And it gives us our second bottom. Okay, you you wanna be very sure once the market does that, it's coming back onto the previous high, making the new low. You definitely know that it's gonna give you the double bottom type of tendency, kind of giving you some sort of a consolidation, or even try hit a stop loss if you've got a stop loss in which that's why I advise not to actually work around stop losses i don't use a stop loss because of situations like this you can you might get kicked out of a actually a good trade whereas the market is just trying to hunt uh the people that are a bit greedy on the chart so yeah the market pushes up confidently we take more buys we go in aggressively right there it pushes up 
very strong and comes back down when it comes back down aggressively obviously it would have been a deep profit on the first trade second trade as well since your first entry point second entry point you've got a third entry point already so the market here what it has done like with the previous trade it has given you three chances to actually enter your first buy second buy and third buy if you do not take these trades at any of these buy opportunities i don't know why you're trading you know second third trade even your fourth one sorry i didn't see that so it has given us at this point it was given us four trade four uh, buy opportunities if you miss all these four, I don't know how busy you are, whether you're working on mine or whatever, but there's no way you can miss so many entry points, especially on a four hour time frame, because this is hours and hours of waiting for entries. So you can't miss it. Definitely gives us that triple bottom there, you know, um, giving us that consolidation, that confidence on, on say, okay, let's see, we know after the law you give us, you're gonna break that high and give us our buy. It did exactly that, took that buy, strong push to the upside, you know? So the question is now, what do you do with situations like these where I'm gonna zoom in just like that? With a situation like this where the market obviously takes a strong buy to the upside and you see it creating highs and lows on this time frame, on the H4 time frame, right? If I go to a smart time frame, we'll be able to pick out so many entry points just from here, from here to this high, from this low here to this high. There'll be so many entry points. <coughs> Sorry about that. God bless me. Okay. Um, there'll be so many interests from this buy here to here, but the question is how do you how certain how do you make sure you get all the right lows? And how do you make sure that you're not buying on a high even though you do know the market is going up? And how do you make sure how do you prevent a drop like this to come back and sabotage you? Meanwhile, you've got a buy run about this section and how do you actually prevent? How do you make all the money that you want in just this one push? But here it is. I'm gonna show you that in just one piece of the section. So I'm gonna highlight this phase, right? I'm gonna highlight this phase of the market right here. And I'm gonna show you guys how to dominate the market once you've taken the first. So this buy entry, obviously here, is on a big time frame, that is H4. So the question is, do you buy here and never buy again and wait for it to come back? Of course you can just buy here and sit back and wait for the next buy. That is a long time. In fact, the next buy is a big, is a major buy. Because if I had to put, a, if I had to highlight right there for on this high here, you realize that, the next buy, you realize the next buy, let just get my mouse closer. Just do that, so yep. Yeah. Just gonna get that out of line. Okay, there you go. So you realize the next buy literally came from this high, which was obviously the next buy entry point would have been in this section. So do you wait after buying here? Do you wait for it to come back and sit there? What about all these entries that you might have missed? I mean, you've put in two trades or two trades there, two trades here, and two trades here. Are you gonna hold those six trades till the money comes back and waiting for that long just to capitalize on your profit? No. So the idea is to always walk out with as much as you can from any sort of movement. It doesn't have to be. The market will always be there. The market never runs away, you know? So, but you must always learn to capitalize when you can. The moment you see that that is the time to eat, Make sure you walk out with as much as you can. So this is the idea. Always make sure that you actually do this. I'm gonna break down this market just here, right here. I'm just gonna break down how to dominate the market. And that's why I always say buy again, buy again. So the question is, why does leadership always say buy again, buy again, add more buyers, this, this, add more buyers. So what's going on? Let me show you guys how to actually kill the trick, okay? Remember, this is all for free. Imagine, this is actually a class you're supposed to pay for like, I don't know how many thousands. And uh, none of that, but it doesn't matter. Uh, we at well, I'm still pushing my vision. My goal is, is is to empower and touch lives in Africa, and I'm gonna do that regardless of um, challenges that I face. Um, and I hope this will definitely help you grow as a trader. So I'm highlighting. I'm working on this phase of the chart right now. So after this buy, why, how exactly were you going to dominate the chart besides the next pass? So where's other entry points? Because at this point, we only have one major entry. One major entry point, two major entries, which is this the, the first major entry on the slow, the second, and then we have obviously the second major. The third major would be this one. But are you really gonna wait for that long for the next entry point? So I'm gonna show you how to dominate the chart right there. From this low, just to there. So I'm gonna change time frames, I'm gonna change to one hour, right? Change to one hour. And obviously as I change to one hour, the market will zoom out and take me back. So I'm not now try to scroll back to where we were. Yeah, I'm scrolling back to where we were. Yeah, hopefully that's not glitch and not... Okay, I think it should allow us to actually 
There you go. Back to you. Are. Okay. So some will be asking, but then why does this graph look a bit different? That's only because we're on a different time frame. All of a sudden, this part of the graph. I said I'm gonna walk around this phase. Just from here, I highlighted it. You know, from the 27th of May till uh, 10th June last year. So the question is, on, on one hour in H4, we always saw this entry point and nothing else. But the question is, why are you going to wait for it to come back and drop major like it did here in your buy again? How do you make sure you dominate the market? That's quite simple. After a major buy, I'm just going to go into there and highlight our oh, housing sold right there. So after you buy here, where is your next entry point? You bought here, the market pushes up, the moment comes back for a low. This is on a smaller time frame. On one hour, one hour time frame, as you step down to a lower time frame, you start seeing more and more and more and bigger and better entry points because obviously, it, it's four hour, on a four hour, four hour time frame, it takes four hours to make a candlestick, to, to close, open and close a candlestick. On a one hour time frame, it takes an hour to open and close a candlestick. So which means that we'll have more candlesticks um, on a one hour time frame than on an H4, you know? So, as you can see from our first buy, when the market pushed up, came back down the very first low we saw there from after buying here the first low we saw would be obviously on about this one i'm going to change this color of the ray so you don't get confused remember that the black horizontal line is from h4 so the ray i'll make it can i make it blue yeah we'll make it blue yeah blue should be fine so this is this would be your right after this buy the second entry point will be right there on the slow how confident are you you can say it's given that Double bottom, you guys. People call this head and shoulders. This is your well, first shoulder, your head, and then the second part. But all I just said, this is for me, this is just our low resistance, our more your triple bottom. You know, the, the market is really supporting and resisting on that on that on that phase of the market to, to prove to you that listen, from here, if you don't take this buy, I'm gonna leave you. So you better jump on and look at how many trades it has given us. So look at that. This is one hour, and one hour gave us so many entry points. So look, after this buy, the market came up, went up, and came back down. We took a buy, pushed up again. We're already in profits, we're already in good profits. So this is NASDAQ, it's not your HD. We're already sitting comfortable. Comes drops back down. Do not panic. When it comes back down, it's giving you an entry. This is a buy market. We know we've taken our major buy on H4. It's mark. We have to wait for it to actually break the, 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 the previous high for us to actually start losing confidence and suspecting that it could drop slightly a bit to come give us a, another major buy. But at the moment, you see that after you buy here, the market goes up next, gives you a buy entry point. Right there, from there, it pushes strong here to the upside comes back down again that is your second buy and look at the shows here. your second buy is still right about on the same entry points that's what we actually people call that's about that that is the phase where i always say buy again buy again or on instagram is probably known for what barcode entries we find a lot of entries at the same spot because the market keeps going back and says listen jump in one more time i'm giving you a chance but initially what is happening is that they're trying to kick out people who would stop loss and all of that so you could just stop loss I don't know where, somewhere, probably here, and you bought here, or you bought, and then it comes and kicks you out because you stop loss. These are all stop loss hunting. And we add, as the smart traders, we just add and add and add, you know? Right there. And the market, what did it do? It pushed up and pushing up. As soon as it pushed up past the previous high, what does it do? It comes back and takes a slight rest on the previous high, right there. There's it. I'm gonna highlight it next to you guys. Previous high section, high section. This is the previous high as well. The market comes back and sits in right there because it obviously the idea is that you must you must definitely have moved your stop loss into profit and put it around about here. So you just want to kick you out before you can actually go forward. So leave your stop loss, not put the, don't put it into place because if you do, you you'd have been kicked out and walk away with three thousand rand instead of a very big amount. So you you play smart. You know you're obviously moving in a profitable market. You know exactly what you're doing. So as soon as the market goes up, when it comes hunting down, giving that low again, you take your buy one more time. You take your buy right here goes up comes back down you take your second entry pushes charging up charges up to the upside but as soon as it pushes like that comes back down again perfect as i zoom in right there just highlight so there's that low there where did it come back and sit so if you look at it there's a high there previous high new low perfect spot on so somebody would have asked me when i was here and i said this high takes out this low they would have asked me but why didn't this one come in 10 here is because the future always brings itself out this high was not meant for this one. This high was meant for this low that was going to happen, but took that happened immediately after the push from this low, and thereafter, obviously, when the market continued moving up, it moved extremely off the previous high and came back and sat on it right there. So, how many entry points have we had on a short space from our major entry? We've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
and then board push strongly to the upside after it pushes strongly to the upside already look what now our daily analysis has done remember that this pink line is from our daily analysis at this point you don't have to put nothing you don't have to put your horizontal line you don't have to pick out an entry point because now this is a daily entry your daily your daily horizontal line obviously your daily resistance or support section is showing you listen you after you, once you break this line you're coming to buy on on this pink line obviously that if the when the market comes and sits there you take your buy so waited for it after immediately after our buy here wait for it we see it breaking that and all i was waiting for is for the market to come and sit right on there and when it sat there we took our buy so we don't have to put anything on there so i don't know what number all kinds of entries after that so this is how you dominate one major entry points right from daily going back down going down to h4 um you know h4 one hour and all the way down to uh one minute you know so obviously i'll try break it down as much as i can so right after this entry we bought came out market comes back a bit down and it sits in on the this i call the inner high of the previous low so this is the previous low this is the this section here is the inner high so the inner high of the previous low because the overall high is there the previous high point is there this is the previous this is the, this is the current uh low point this is the inner high of the previous of the of the previous um low or, or of the current low the market comes back and sits right in there because it's looking for your stop loss your stop loss should be run about this section it hits your stop loss you walk out with about 300 right and then it goes up and gives us we we'll know how to actually how we we'll know how the market moves and gives us the big money and those who are greedy they walk away with little cents okay right after this entry point look at that push powerful to the upside went up and came back down where is it sitting obviously i get my highlights right there i'm highlighting the section of the previous one sorry so right there so get my highlights highlights there you can see the market came back to sit on the previous low making obviously previous high making a new low right there and then it is the market just from there we know we, we add more buys remember that we're still adding that's how we say add more add more imagine the amount of money that you're in imagine the kind of profit you're making at this moment the market pushes up comes back down so the question is why doesn't the market now come push up and come back down to this high it's because it loves resting on the previous on the inner high of the previous low i spoke about this this is very powerful so there are two sections in which the market will always sit at it's either it pushes up and breaks the previous high right and after breaking breaking the previous high it will come back and rest on the previous high it breaks the previous high and comes back comes back and then obviously rest on it so this is the previous high it will break it and then come back and rest on it if it doesn't rest on it it will definitely go sit turn on the, in the in a high of the previous low why does it do that because that is called obviously when the market has to remain technical and also kick out those who remain greedy stop loss hunting but that is nature of technical movement besides stop loss hunting besides anything that is the nature of technical movement after this we took a strong buy there we are shoot up to the upside deep in profit one more time you know comes back a bit down we see it obviously it remains on the high creates a high and then and a low sits so there a buy comes back has a stop loss technical nature it goes up you know so how many entry points have we identified on a one hour time frame on that phase let's see so much just at this phase how many entry points have we identified or we've picked up one okay one two i think number three or four here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so under one h4 entry point we've picked up 12 entries just on one h4 entry because if i go back let's go back to h4 let's go back to h4 and show which part exactly i was breaking down a small part of the market that if you had dominated just a small part now this is how you do it perfect there's the part i was analyzing right here one big buy on h4 and look what what one hour is showing us Going to obviously 50, I mean, um, daily, sorry, daily time frame. Going to daily time frame, you wouldn't even see where exactly the entry point was. Daily time frame, you will not have seen. The only buy you can see is this one here, this one here, this. You can't even see nothing. So it's very important for you to understand the importance of time frame. Time frame understanding is very key. Going back to, to H1, I'm going to show you guys, like, obviously. Um, and I hope you guys, under, guys understand my entry breakdown so after you've picked you've seen your end your big your entry point on a big time frame this is how you break it down and you don't have to wait for the market to go and make new highs or whatever no you deal with what you are looking at what you're facing you can see okay listen this market is on a low it has to go up and then come down on a major time frame 
I want to eat off the current push. And how do you dominate that? You do exactly how I showed you. You know, in the next video that I'll post probably next week, I'll show you how to move from one hour to 30 minutes, 30 minutes to 15, and obviously finally get to the most powerful movement, which is the one hour, how to kill it right there, right now, an instant. But this, I hope, will definitely help you grow. Uh, let me give you an idea on how I'm going to kill the future of NASDAQ from current price. So it's quite simple. It's quite simple. Let's move all the way up. Uh, uh, let me do that daily. Let's do that daily. Time frame. There you go. So the question is, since I've deleted my analysis, how am I, how am I going to kill... How, do I, how am I going to dominate the future of NASDAQ? It's quite simple, okay? What I've done here, let me quickly just analyze this part. So what I've done here is I realized the market, uh, there we go. The market, let me just do that. Sorry about that. Okay, the market definitely hit, obviously hit a double top. They came back up and gave us a turn. Sorry, I just want to do that. Gave, it, gave us a turn on, on what I spoke about on the time frame. This is the previous low. The inner high. This is that inner high I spoke about. This is the previous low. This is the inner high. It came back and turned right on that, you know. And that's what you could see in my analysis before I actually um, deleted everything. You would have seen that, that curve line explaining that we're going to go from here. We're going to go from there to my inner high right there. And then we're going to... Nasdaq, we're still coming up. And we're going to break that high you know we're going to break that high very strong so obviously we're going to break that high definitely after that so the question is it's not have to reanalyze this part but i've been killing it from so simplest simplest way to the easiest way to show it show you guys look same thing what happened after the market first entry second entry third entry point we bought there strong i've been saying buy I took out other trades throughout last week, run about here. There. Even right now, we're sitting on a current buy zone. That's it. The market is giving us our, our third buy area there. You know? So worst case scenario, what could happen? What if the market doesn't buy there? Worst case scenario is not even that. It's not even that scary. Worst case scenario for, for this push here is literally like uh, around that zone. Run about this section. Which I don't see it going because of it has already given us a very strong resistance and support area on that point. But should it actually try to play out differently, it'll come that low. But other than that, we'll be, I'm getting my buys in because they will not blow my account at that section there. So as you can see, the market definitely gives us a buy. So once it does this, the moment this is your time to buy. From here, I know it's just going to shoot up. Um, What time is it now? Uh, I think I'm waiting for US Open. So, is, what time is it? 20 plus 12. So I'm waiting for US Open. I'm um, looking up, definitely looking for the US, US Open to give it a definitely strong push to the upside. Even if it doesn't, the market will still go up. Simple. This is what you call trading made easy. So, even in the past, here's a technical simple. Here's a simple. Even in the past, how it got up here, before we actually turned here, we killed these buys. Here they are. Buy, 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 buy. Everything is just clear, you know. But um, in the next phase of the market, the next phase of analysis, I will be showing you how to kill it even, more, even worse. Because remember today, we have, we were able to identify, we were able to identify how many trade limit count, how many entry points, let me see. Oh, see, I can't actually count them on the phone, but I think we were able to identify just under 15 entry points under one H4 entry on one hour time frame. So the question is, how many more entries can we pick up in that section on lower time frames? And how many, how much more money could you make on that, or just on that phase only in a lower time frame? But the question is, a lot of money. That's the answer, sorry. Is a lot of money, many entry points. Uh, with my next video, I'm going to show you. Literally, we could end up picking up close to over 50 to 80 entry points right there, going lower and lower into different time frames. But for this video, thank you very much, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. With love.